let's dive into a little more about what you started a few months back, and it's mm-hmm. when, it's why you're on the show today, uh, because you had, uh, r- I guess, received some information. I actually got the same data um, that was like the raw data from the China study, uh, mm-hmm. not, not what T. Colin Campbell, speaking of leaving out all the facts, um, that book was pretty much a propaganda piece. And, oh, yeah. and you exposed that in a way that I don't think anybody had before. In fact, I was just reading before we came on the show, um, Chris Masterjohn, who did an incredible review of mm-hmm. the China Study book. He said, well, there's a new contender in town. And while I may have hit <laughs> the beast with a few strong punches and made a run for it, Denise Minger went for the jugular and then put a nail through the coffin. So <laughs> you're getting high praise from some really, uh, I guess, big names in this world that we hang around in. Tell us, uh, yeah. I guess, what what led you to want to start writing about the China study and exposing some of the flaws therein? Well, I think it was about the 83rd or 84th time someone had said to me, haven't you read the China study? Why aren't yeah. you vegan anymore? Um, I just got so frustrated because I had read the, the China study back when it came out. Um, I think, well... 2006 was when I read it, and I was at that time no longer a vegan, so I was not as convinced by it. I wasn't as willing to kind of gloss over its flaws, and so I I was very skeptical of it, but I was not skeptical enough to really care that much about um, taking it apart. So at some point, I forget what the the final straw was for me. I just decided I was going to just track down the China study, the original stuff, and try to find out what was really going on with it. And actually, it's funny you mentioned Chris because his review um, was something that I found online. And it was what inspired me to actually go back and look at the original data because that's what he had done. He had pulled numbers from the data set and showed why Campbell's interpretation of them and use of them was completely wrong. So um, that was kind of the instigating factor for me, too. And... Um, I think let's see, it was about, I think in June, May, May or June, um, I realized that this book was available. This, it was a giant monograph, 900 pages called Diet, Lifestyle, and Mortality in China. And so I spent some time trying to track it down because it's like 300 bucks if you want to buy it. And I'm, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm not going to do that. So I found it, uh, a way to get it through the library and picked it up one day and it was just so fascinating because Jimmy, I love books, and I love numbers, but the only thing I love more than both is books with numbers. And this thing is just, it's an entire, I mean, it's 800 pages of these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful numbers. And so when I got it, I was really excited, and I pretty much put my life on hold. because <laughs> This is a really cool project for me. Yeah. So I just, I started um, crunching numbers. I was, I spent a long time just trying to understand how to navigate through this book. And um, the more, the more I looked at it, um, well, I didn't really have any expectations when I went into it. I was just kind of curious because I really had no idea what was going to happen. But the more I looked at the book, the more I studied the numbers, and the more I compared what the original data said to what Campbell was trying to claim that it said, right. the more I felt um, – how can I describe this? Uh, there's Okay. <laughs> there's a book by Judge Judy um, called Don't Pee on My Shoe and Tell Me It's Raining. Right. <laughs> Have you heard of this? And that that sense, that sentiment, is exactly how I felt. I was just thinking, this is so absurd. This is just such a, such a blatant distortion of the facts. Come on, Campbell, stop peeing on my shoe. Just stop it. Yeah. And I, it was I was really frustrated too. And I don't get well. I do kind of get worked up about stuff. <laughs> but no. I, th- I was really no really. But I this was just really eating at me. So I decided. You know, what else am I going to do with all this stuff? I have all this stuff, and I don't know where to put it. So I'll put it on my blog because, you know, where else am I going to put it? In my diary? I'm not 12. So I decided to just kind Dear of Dear diary. Post- Dear diary. The camel go away. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Um, so I, I decided to put it on my blog, and it was originally just kind of a thinking out loud type thing. I went through each animal food variable and typed out the associations that it had with disease. And I tried to see if there were any what are called confounding factors, which are things that can kind of muddy up a relationship between a variable and an outcome. And I found that pretty much across the board, every single time there was anything that looked like it could be a disease associated with an animal product, 
it was obscured by something else. Like fish, for instance, um, it looked to be associated with liver cancer. But when you look closer at the data, you can see that fish are eaten in regions that are typically humid, which um, that type of climate really breeds uh, hepatitis B virus and aflatoxin, which is a very potent carcinogen that contributes to liver cancer. And once you take those things out of the equation, you can see that um, fish itself is not actually associated with liver cancer. It's just that it happens to be along for the ride. So time after time after time, every single time I was looking at an animal product and trying to figure out what was going on with it, it just became clear that there was no, there was no ground to make the claims that Campbell had made. Just none. Not a zilch. Zippo. Zero. So how did it get away with it? Um, I don't know. Because <laughs> people buy I into it. You, a you, secret. you talk about getting emails and, and people linking you. Well, just read the China study. I mean, I'm a low-carb guy, and they mm-hmm. link it to me. They're like, oh, don't you know this refutes <laughs> everything you do with your diet? And I'm like, no, it mm-hmm. doesn't. Not at all. Yeah. You know, I think it's a matter of people just wanting it to be true. So badly because this is the only thing. I mean, as a vegan, it's funny because I spent so many years in those shoes. I wore the vegan shoes, the non-leather shoes, and it, after a while, you just you have, you have nothing to cling to because everyone's attacking you. Everyone's against you. You have to be on the defense at all points, or else, or else, or else you just you get trampled by by everybody else. So when you're a vegan and something like this comes along, the China study. It's awesome. It's it's suddenly your gospel, and you're holding it up, and you're waving it as your banner, and and you don't really take the time to really critically analyze it. So I guess that's what's going on with this. Um, it just fits so cleanly with the vegan ideology, and it's masquerading un- under the name of science. And so that's something that appeals to people, sadly. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly, it does. And I think w- one of the things that has happened, too, was just after... After this came out, there was another book that came out by Gary Tobbs, Good Calories, Mm -hmm. Bad Calories, which a lot of people in my world tend to trumpet as that. So the the danger is, well, they have their China study. We have our Good Calories, Bad Calories, (laughs) and uh, let's pee on each other and tell them it's raining. (laughs) Basically, that's what people are saying. But the difference is, and you've done a beautiful job of exposing it, Denise, the difference is Tobbs's book was based on science and is mm-hmm. totally based on, uh, I think he's got 150 pages just of references in his book. Yeah. Whereas, yep, yep, yep. W- where is it in the China study? Uh, he's he's citing this very study that you took a look at, the actual mm-hmm. data, but not really much else, right? Well, well, actually, to his credit, he does cite quite a few other studies. Okay. But the funny thing is, when you actually look at what those are um, examining, they don't Almost always, they do not support what he's trying to use them for. He does cite a lot of studies by his um, his vegan physician colleagues, he calls them, yeah. and people like McDougal and Ornish and Pritikin. Sure. But the funny thing is, when you look at what their diets are about, they are not only eliminating animal products as a means to um, prevent or reverse disease. They're also eliminating things like processed uh, starch and sugar, refined carbohydrates, uh, extra sodium, all the bad stuff, vegetable oils. And for whatever reason, and I've never understood exactly why this occurs, but in the vegan world, when you eliminate all those things along with animal products, animal products is the one thing that gets um, the credit for uh, causing disease versus all these other things that you're also eliminating while, while trying to heal. And it just, it doesn't make sense, but um, he does, yeah, Campbell does cite other things, but by and large, it, it's still a weak argument in my opinion. Now he's an interesting character. Uh, several <laughs> years back, I started on Amazon, this uh, thread called, what are your criticisms of the low carb lifestyle? I sincerely yeah. put that out there. Uh, it's gosh, it's been four or five years ago. I did that when I first started blogging and it was uh-huh. like all these people started, you know, talking their criticisms. Cause I truly wanted to hear what people had to say in, mm-hmm. in negative response to it. And it, I mean, people have gotten on there and done all kinds of things. And guess who has popped on there from time to time over the past year? None other than Campbell. T. Colin Campbell himself. Yeah. And, and in yes. fact, 
uh, I started having a, a, a gentlemanly dialogue with him. And at first, he can be very gentlemanly. Mm-hmm. But then you start even questioning him at all. And he just goes on attack mode, attack mode. In fact, it's funny because I asked him if he'd like to come on this podcast show to talk uh-huh. about some of... Uh, what he's done over the years in the China study. And he's like, oh, sure, I'd love to come on. So we started setting it up. And and then, like, two days later, he writes me and says, well, all of the vitriolic attacks against me, personal attacks, <laughs> I just don't think I want to be associated with that. And I'm like, oh, wow. is this guy like a whack job wow. or what? I mean, it, it really, it, uh-huh. it's a shame that, that they have to be, like you said earlier, it has to be like this cult mentality uh, mm-hmm. about the way they believe. I mean, I don't care how you eat. If you want to eat vegan, go for it. I mean, if that's what floats your boat. Yeah. But it's just become such a religion to, to at least on that side of things, it seems to be more of a religion than than people like you and me. Yes, I agree. And I'm I'm the same way. I, if People can eat whatever they want as long as it's not me. So, <laughs> exactly. But, uh, um, and actually, it's funny that you brought that up because I, I read that most of that thread, um, just completely <laughs> amused at all the ad hominem attacks that were being launched. It was very entertaining. And in fact, um, yeah, actually, in fact, it was reading that thread where I saw um, Richard Nikolai. Yep. I, I was really just, because you know him, you're, you're acquainted with him. Yep. And he's a very, he's got a lot of opinions on stuff, which is awesome. And I actually sent him a link to my um, critique a few days after I wrote it, because right. at the time, my blog had about 20 hits a day, which I thought was a lot at the time. <laughs> but I, I sent it to him because I figured it wasn't going to get a lot of circulation. And I sent it to a couple other people. I actually sent it to Chris Masterjohn, too, because well, um, I had appreciated it. Richard forwarded it to a whole bunch of people because I was on that list of people that mm-hmm. he forwarded it to after you forwarded it to him. So yeah. the the, the uh, uh, whisper campaign began. So yes, in fact, in fact, I owe him almost everything um, just for the fact that he. I don't know what he did. He worked his magic, and he got my link out there in a way that was like viral. It was incredible. Yeah. Um, within one, within 24 hours, my, that one page had 20,000 hits. Yeah. It was really phenomenal. I just couldn't believe it. Did I thought you expect that at all clicks. ever? Did you ever no. in a million years when you started writing these, uh, China study columns think that, Oh, 20,000 people are going to read this. And I'm sure it's even more than that by now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that just had to just blow your mind, Denise. Oh, yes, my mind was blown. It was <laughs> it was really, I, I could not believe it. I didn't even imagine that so many people out there would be interested in this, honestly. And I think that's because I was still associating with um, the vegan community. And that's who my posse was at the time. Yeah. And, of course, they've been thoroughly exiled now, so I have to find new people. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I couldn't believe that there were even that many, if there, there were 20,000 people out there even who would, care to read this because I wrote a lot of stuff and it was long and I couldn't I don't know if someone wrote that I don't know if I'd read it <laughs> well, no I'm sure I would but you'd be surprised how many people are trying to educate themselves and they don't care mm-hmm. the link they just want quality and you are an incredible writer it's very obvious oh you've thank you trained at it you've been doing it a while you're, you're a freelancer is that right and so I am yeah. yeah, so so you do this by, uh, I guess, trade, but you also have a passion for getting truth out there, and you can tell you're a voracious reader with the way, the way you write, and uh, and that's a that's a compliment to you that you should be proud of. So, well, thank you, Jimmy. You're very welcome.